All right, back to these two dick bags playing with each other's balls. Um, before we get into anything, though, hopefully you are here for this part two because you checked out part one, and not because you just kind of stumbled across this in some kind of a search query thing or something. Because um, I guess you wouldn't be missing out on anything. It's just me making fun of these morons. I'm actually just calling out the bullshit uh, is what's really happening. I'm not making fun of them except for that intro that I did. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, it would just be cool to watch the whole thing. So you can get the full scope on all the nonsense. But anyways, without further ado, let's get it. But also, it's like you're playing Monopoly with somebody who, you know, won't pass go and won't follow any of the rules. And how do you ever make any progress if they're not following the rules? Well, you got to send even... them to jail, uh, you know. <laughs> There's that little box in there. Directly to jail. What are they talking about here? Something missing. Something. Let me back up. I, I picked up right where I left off in part one, but uh, something's missing. So uh, bring it down to, like, right here should be fine. Constitution. And constitutional authority, and and so, and I mean that sincerely because I often get asked, "Look, the Republicans don't play it square. Why do you play it square?" We do, Dick. Yeah, well, well, guess what? If we do the same thing they do, our democracy would literally be in jeopardy. No, actually, it'd be better if you did if you played right and stuff. The only problem is you're concerned that you would never have any kind of office. Because at the end of the day, your policies and stuff suck. When I say you, I don't mean Biden. I mean the Democrats in general. I mean, why do you think there's going to be a massive red wave? Because, you know, maybe if Democrats did something for the people, then they could keep their jobs. But everybody's like, yeah, Democrats suck, so bye. Well, I mean, yeah. not a joke. And you know, they're so stupid, too. Everything's always... They say this stupid nonsense all the time, but then all they do is the exact opposite, you know? Oh, this, oh, we gotta protect our democracy, but then they cheat to win elections, or or they talk about um, I don't know, what is it? There's something else to talk about, but at the same time, they're quick to silence any opinion that is different than theirs. Like, why do you think conservative viewpoints have such a hard time on any platforms? Because for some reason, this nonsense is winning. Which doesn't make any sense because literally like 10% or less of the population actually thinks like these freaks do. But somehow, they control all the media. And so, as soon as somebody has a differing opinion, actually a normal, correct, proper opinion. Oh, then that's the problem. We gotta block that. We can't hear that. I, I understand that argument, but also it's like you're playing Monopoly with somebody who, you know, won't pass go and won't follow any of the rules, and how do you ever make any progress if they're not following the rules? Well, you got to send even... them to jail. Uh, so what? The, basically, they were just talking about, like, policies going through and, and, and things being voted for, right? Is that what this was about that I rewinded to? And... What is, so he equates it to monopoly and 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 somebody cheating and then send them to jail. Okay, well I guess that can be used for you, meaning the Democrats again, because all you do is fucking cheat. So okay, Joe, put yourself in jail. Bye, faggot. No. <laughs> There's that little box in there. Directly to jail. Oh, no. No, directly to jail. The president is with us. Joseph Biden will be right back to talk more. This embarrassment is with us, Joseph Biden. We'll be right back. <laughs> I gotta go gag on his balls now. <laughs> President Biden um, and the First Lady is with us too here in Hollywood. Will you be and my going? granddaughter? And your granddaughter is here. The family is here, and, <laughs> and her fiance. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously they're wearing masks, so you can't really see anything. But like, ugh, my granddaughter. Why would you want to be related to him? I know you can't help it, but jeez, so embarrassing. Yeah, that's my grandpa. Uh, don't call me out. Uh, don't make everybody know. Ugh. And fiance, ooh, yeah, it's my could... daughter's birthday. Oh, how about that? Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, baby. <laughs> Does somebody have to... Like... My daughter's birthday. Wait, I only have sons, right? Duh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Remind you of all that stuff no, with all this no. crazy... 
Yeah, you constantly need somebody to remind you because of your ripping Alzheimer's, you can't do anything on your own. <laughs> I mean, seriously, everything has to have a teleprompter. Everything has to, like they always say, you're the Ron Burgundy with the teleprompter. You can't do anything free, free balling. You just see a screen and say what it says. And then as soon as it's done, you run away. Oh, I can't take questions because that would require me to actually free ball this and I can't do that. The last question, but go ahead. The response to this pandemic has become very politicized. Even wearing a mask has become political. If elected, how are you going to get Americans on the same page? And can your plan be successful if they aren't? Well, I think the way to get it on the same page is to, uh, I'm going to try to say this uh, politely, is to lower the rhetoric based on division. Stop appealing to the, uh, the less healthy side of society. Instead of, for example, when a golf cart goes by yelling white supremacy and the president tweets it out, um, don't do things like that. Bring the country together. We're giving a portion of the population who has responded to the uh, the sort of race baiting the president has engaged in uh, a sort of free pass. What do you think, President Biden? Place your pass. Do you think your place is a political liability? That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. I learned a lot. And I learned that uh, it makes a difference. This was the driving board area, and I was one of the guards, and there were not a, there was a three meter board. And you fell off sideways, you landed on the damn, uh, the darn cement over there. <laughs> and Corn Pop was a bad dude, and he ran a bunch of bad boys. And I did, and back in those days, to show how things have changed, one of the things you had to use, if you used pomade in your hair, you had to wear a bathing cap. And so he was up on the board, wouldn't listen to me. I said, hey, Esther, you, off the board, or I'll come up and drag you off. Well, he came off, and he said, I'll meet you outside. My car, this was mostly, these were all public housing behind it. My car, there was a gate out here. I parked my car outside the gate. And I, he said, I'll be waiting for you. He was waiting for three guys in straight razors. Not a joke. There was a guy named Bill Wright, Mouse, the only white guy, and he did all the pools. He was the mechanic. And I said, what am I going to do? He said, come down here in the basement where mechanics, where, where, where all the pool f f filter is. You know, the chain, there used to be a chain that went across the deep end. And he cut off a six-foot length of chain. He folded up. He said, you walk out with that chain. And you walk to the car and say, you may cut me, man, but I'm going to wrap this chain around your head. I said, you kidding me? He said, no, if you don't, don't come back. And he was right. So I walked out with the chain. And I walked up to my car. And they had, they, in those days, you used to remember the straight race. You'd bang them on the curb, get them rusty, put them in a rain barrel, get them rusty. And I looked at them, but I was smart then. I said, first of all, I said, when I tell you to get off the board, you get off the board, and I'll kick you out again. But I shouldn't have called you, Esther Williams. I apologize for that. I apologize. But I didn't know that apology was going to work. He said, you apologize to me? I said, I apologize for that. Not for throwing you out, but I apologize for what I said. He said, okay, close the straight razor, and my heart began to beat again. <laughs> What's going on? No, no, no. My dad used to have an expression. Family is the beginning, the middle, and the end. We, um... <laughs> he always has these stupid, my dad used to say this, my mom used to say this. What does this even mean? My dad used to have an expression, beginning, middle, end, white. So your dad just walked around all the time, family's beginning, middle, end, every day. Hey, guess what, guys? Family's beginning, middle, end. Well, you probably said it once, and you're acting like this is a lifelong thing, or you're just making it up, because that's what your whole entire life has been. Lies and making stuff up, so... He probably doesn't even remember his dad. What, the, who, what was my dad's name? What did he look like? Do I have a dad? Actually, ironically, if he did say what is my dad's name, it would be funny because he's a junior. So what do you think your dad's name is? <laughs> I think
think a lot of Democrats are frustrated because, you know, we got out and voted. Um, we won the House. The We got out and cheated. You know, we uh, helped dead people vote for us. Um, we allowed people to vote three, four, five times. <laughs> You know, showing up with the I voted sticker, even though they got a uh, ballot in their hand ready to go. Um, so we stole the House and the Senate. We obviously stole your spot. Uh, Senate. Um, the then don't forget, we made up tons of lies against the Republicans. No, they were working with Russia and all this other nonsense just to try to create diversions from all the scams we were doing. Uh, White House, obviously, and still we have had made very little progress as far as I'm concerned when it comes to... Okay, very little progress. Yeah, tons of reasons for that. One, you got a weak piece of crap with ripping Alzheimer's who hasn't done a single thing in his 40-something years of politics sitting right in front of you. Why do you think nothing's gotten done? Second off, all these people care about is themselves. You know, Nancy Pelosi and all them stupid top... Uh, politicians. Th you think they care about the regular people? Or even the country? No. They care about lining their pockets and that's it. What can I do to better corrupt myself? Hmm. Of course nothing's getting done. You don't have a single person in there doing anything. <laughs> oh, we won all this. Yeah, look who won. Uh, quote unquote won. Uh, uh, the, the loser team. Of course nothing's getting done. How are you surprised by that? He's over here, oh, we got everything, how come we nothing's getting, gee, I don't know. What kind of history do you guys have on ever getting anything done? I mean, look at, look at Obama's administration, nothing got done. You think something's going to be different with this idiot? He worked right with Obama those eight years, of course nothing's getting done. Oh. The only time something did get done was in the last four years from 2016 to 2020. And it, because why? One, it wasn't your stupid team, and two, look what happened, everybody... Well, all of you acted like it was so horrible. Oh my god, things are getting done. Oh, we don't like this. <laughs> like, seriously. Guns, obviously. Uh, reproductive rights, voting rights, climate change. The, all these things, and in some ways, we've, we've moved backwards. Well, in climate change, we've actually made some real moves. I mean, we have, we have you know, one in seven of the, all the changes that have taken place in terms of solar, wind, and, 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 and wind pumps. and I mean, uh, pumps and like... Yeah, wind pumps, dumbass. Idiot. Uh, have occurred in the last 18 months. We've moved, and there's an opportunity with the process we have dealing with energy to be able to gradually move more rapidly than we have been to alternatives. For example, electric vehicles. Jimmy, when I got elected, I, you know, I've pushed electric vehicles for the last, I don't know, God knows how long. Well, I had, I had a, a, a conversation with the chairman of the board of General Motors, Mary Berry, and, uh, um, and she, she was suing California, remember, and for because your standard was too high. Right. Said, well, guess what? We had a conversation. I got a call from her about three days, four days later. She dropped the suit and committed she's going to go all electric in the entire General Motors line, and by 2035, by 2030, going 50% electric. You know, there's so much nonsense with this all-electric stuff. First off, um, um, it, it still requires fossil fuels and all that to make the batteries. So you're acting like this is going to do something positive. Ooh, all green and blah, blah, blah. But you're still using fossil fuels, just not in cars. Instead of putting it in cars directly, you're using it to still make them. So one great, great <laughs> movement there. All right, I'm trying to. I'm gonna try to rip through this because there's a lot of data, but I just want to get the general point here. So, in this article by uh, Mr. Green, it says it takes roughly the equivalent of 260 gallons of gas to make the typical car of around 3,000 pounds, but a hybrid car takes about 25 percent more than a regular car, or around the equivalent of 325 gallons, because it requires more juice to make the batteries. So, I mean, okay, if you're get, if you're making cars that get rid of the use of gas, then I guess that kind of is insignificant. But still, in the process of making the car, you're using more fuel, so you're still going to need those fossil fuels and all that. Going to an electric car doesn't <laughs> isn't to save all. And then, over here, there's the battery raw material. So, uh, this article, what was this from? Uh, ATZ Worldwide. Richard Backus, um, 
It says graphite we're good on and lithium and lithium ion we're good on. But there's other things like cobalt. Um, I think cobalt is where is this? Uh, da, 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 wasn't this something that I was saying was kind of tight? Yeah, this is due in particular to the expected dynamic growth and demand and res and the resulting potential supply bottlenecks. Um, lithium, we already went over that. It's kind of... It says redu reduced considerably the amount of lithium freely available on the world market. In addition, Asian battery manufacturers in particular have secured large quotas by entering into long-term supply contracts and acquiring stakes in companies. Bottlenecks in the supply of lithium are currently unlikely, but experts have indicated the concentration on just a few producer countries will remain unchanged. Manganese. Battery applications make up only a small part of the manganese market. The main customer for manganese is the steel industry, which uses about 90% of the global supply. Currently, only approximately 0.2% of the manganese extracted throughout the world is used in lithium-ion batteries. Okay, so that's not a big deal. Nickel. Uh, let's see. In twenty twenty, nickel seems like it's okay. Recycling lithium ion. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I thought when I read this article, it was saying something like some of these materials are a little bit difficult to come by. Let me back out of this article. Can I back out of this? Come on. Lithium, nickel, and cobalt are the key metals used to make EV batteries. Analysts believe there is a potential shortfall in the global mining capacity required to extract the minerals needed to manufacture sufficient batteries to meet rejected EV demand. That's what I was looking for. Um, second off, you have Elon Musk with Tesla, which is the biggest manufacturer of electric vehicles currently, who even he said, I don't think we should be pushing towards electric vehicles right now because there's a larger economic impact towards that, which leads into C is that cars are expensive. You know, this dick bag thinks, oh, you can't afford gas, get an electric car. <laughs> I'm so smart. Okay. Well, if somebody can't afford, you know, five bucks a gallon and, you know, 50 bucks a week, let's say, to fill a tank, or 60, 70, I don't know. Uh, you know, if they can't do that, then how do you think they have $50,000 just burning a hole in their pocket to buy a stupid electric vehicle? Like, be real, dickhead. And then, number four is, at least in my area, an electric ve vehicle would be highly impractical. Like, highly. There's no charging stations in my area other than, um, I don't know. It's a t it's a town. How far is it? Maybe thirty five minutes away, that I can think of a, a charging station. Otherwise, I can't think of anywhere else. So what? Any time that my car's battery is low, I gotta drive all the way out there. And what if what if I'm somewhere not even close to that, and I gotta somehow make it all the way out there so I can charge my car? And then, you know, like at least now with gas stations, they're ever you're getting low on gas, no big deal. There's fifteen billion options, no matter where you are. And you might say, oh, well, they allow you to have hookups at your home. Okay, I live in an apartment complex. Okay, they're not going to just be like, yeah, that's cool. You install this. Like, it's not how it works. Yeah, when you have your own house, that works, that you can hook up, you know, your electric crap. But I can't just do this at my apartment. <laughs> also, that brings up another thing, too. It has nothing really to do with the automotive industry, but again, not having a house. You know, I went over this in part one. Why don't I have a house? Because things are so ridiculous in today's world that it's just not reasonable. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, it was super reasonable that somebody could have a house and two cars and support a family on one job. Now it's like I can barely afford an apartment and support myself, never mind a family, and barely, <laughs> barely be able to afford one car. And it's just ridiculous how things are nowadays. So, yeah, that's why I don't have a house. And I have just an apartment. And, like, then the other issue is how long does it take to charge a car? You know what I mean? Now you got to go out to one of these charging ports and charge your car. How long do you have to sit there for? You know, at least the gas station, you know, it's, I don't know, depending on how big your tank, it's, let's say, five minutes tops if you got, like, a huge tank. And usually they have convenience stores, so say there's people with you, they can go in and shop at the convenience store to get a drink or whatever. You can go in after and get a drink. Like, 
The charging port that I know of, it's just like sitting there in the middle of nothing. There's no convenience stores nearby that you can go walk around in. And like, how long do you have to sit there while your car is charging? I mean, if it's anything like a phone, you know, phones take like three hours to fully charge. So what, you got to sit there for three hours while your car charges or longer? Because I'm sure a car's battery, no, I'm sure I know a car's battery is way more massive than a phone. So does that mean it's just going to take that much longer to charge? And then you got to think about the grid. Like I hear in California alone, the grid is not set up to be able to support um, electric vehicles in addition to ACs. I mean, look what happens as it is just by trying to run ACs and stuff. They, they have brownouts all the time because their grid can't support it. Now you're suggesting, oh, let's add charging your car to that list of stuff. Like, <laughs> you, these stupid people are exactly that, stupid. They come up with an end goal and don't come up with a plan at all of what needs to happen to reach that end goal. Just, oh, this is what we want, electric cars, so I'll figure it out. <laughs> You don't make enough? Oh, I'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, the grid can't support this? But can't nearly support this? Not nah, figure it out. <laughs> and, you know, these renewable resources have also been recently proven to be not as uh, reliable as you might wish. Like the windmills and stuff. They're not as long-lasting and reliable and what have you as initially thought. Now that they've been up and ma being used and stuff, you've been able to prove it out that eh, this isn't actually as good as we thought it would be. So, yeah. So what now, dickbag? Oh, just stay with the tried and true thing of using um, fuel-powered cars? Oh, okay, yeah. That sounds like a plan, since it's been working for literally over 100 years now, since the days of the Model T. Ugh. Oh. Well, it is, no, but it really is. And then Ford came along and did the same thing. So we're on a path, and, and what is the success? Yeah, he mentions Ford, too. And recently, Ford just had a thing with their Mustangs that they made, the, the electric Mustangs. They had to recall, what, 50,000 of them or something due to some kind of issue. I don't recall what it is offhand, but that had some kind of issue. But I'm pretty sure the issue had to relate to being a battery-powered car. All right, my bad. Got it right here. It's, um... It says that Ford Motors instructing dealers to temporarily stop selling electric Mustang Mach-E crossovers due to a potential safety defect that could cause the vehicles to become immobile. Um, it said that it potentially affected vehicles from 2021 and 22. Um, and that 49,000 of the roughly 100,000 that they made during that time frame will be part of the recall. And what exactly is the issue? The problem involves a potential overheating of the vehicle's high-voltage battery main con contactors, which is an electrically controlled switch for a power circuit. The issue can lead to a malfunction that could cause the vehicle to not start or immediately lose propulsion power while in motion. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. <laughs> So, you know, if those Mustangs were made normal, where they used fuel, there would have been no problem, which means there would be no recall. Like, <laughs> so the Chrysler is doing the same thing. We're moving in directions that are being slow. Look, we won. I won by, I won, got 81 million votes. Uh what the F was that? This idiot was just talking about cars and all these companies that he supposedly talked to which we know it didn't actually happen and then out of nowhere it's like what, what just happened Did you just forget your train of thought look i won by you went from talking about the car industry to talking about the election out of nowhere just strong sharp switch and direction like what more than anybody's ever gotten you know, and I hate that, too. They always say, hey, I got 81 million votes. <laughs> There's no... You did not get 81 million votes. Nobody likes you. <laughs> okay? Do you ever see a Biden flag? No. All you constantly see, still, is Trump flags. Even in my area. Trump flags, it's all over the place. Either F Joe Biden or Trump 2024, make America great again, keep America great, or let's fix America and all this. Nobody's supporting you. There's no way you got that many votes. And it's like... The other thing, too, is you're telling me... That you got way more votes than uh, Obama did, who was the first black president. Brown, let's be real, but still. <laughs> um, yeah, like, the, the, how does a senior citizen with Alzheimer's legitimately get more votes than, ooh, the first black president? And 
Trump got a lot of votes, too, in this election. You know, they don't ever like to talk about that because, oh, well, he lost. It don't matter. But he got something stupid like 76 million or something, 71 million. I don't know. In any case, it was a lot. The funny part is his were actually legit. <laughs> There's You did not get 81 million. Between all those dead people that, you know, were supposedly voting for you and the people voting 10 times for you and all those mail-in ballots that were fraud just straight up from organizations, you know, there's been proof of it that there's been gi- giant amount of ballots cast for this idiot that aren't legit actual ballots because they did the stupid mail and stuff. You know, an easy way to cheat. Like, you didn't get that much. Stop trying to brag. This is like an idiot in baseball that, you know, oh, I got 900 home runs during my career, but they've been doing, like, massive amounts of steroids. Like, you didn't really, okay? Yeah, you did, but you didn't really. Mark McGuire. <laughs> you co- Barry thank Bonds. You for those who you helped with. But what has happened to me is, you know, we still only ended up with 50 senators, which means that we have 50 presidents. And two of them are... Okay, first off, you shouldn't even have 50 senators. You should have zero. I don't know if it's possible to um, have both seats from a state be one party or if it has to be one of each. I'm not fully in the loop on that. But if it can be of one party, then let's do it. Come on, red only. Get every single blue out of there. Second off, what did you say? That means we have 50 presidents? What? What? What, what does that What does that even mean? Bro. <laughs> Ugh. That bald spot right there is psychotic. Jeez. You never really see the back of his head. <laughs> I know, um, on, uh, iffy, I think, uh, well, at best. Here, here, here's the thing. It's interesting. You know, one, one of the things that's causing problems is that people think it's the Democratic Party. You know, if Jimmy was anything real and actually conducting a real interview, though, that's something that he would have done. Instead of going along with this idiot's nonsense, when he did his weird quick shift to the 81 million votes, he would have been like, what were you just talking about? You were talking about something else about the cars. Why did you shift over to this? Can you finish your first thought? Nope, he just goes along. Oh, <laughs> He did so divide it. And the problem, the problem is we have 48 out of 50 senators vote with me 95% of the time. More th- what does he talk about? We're so divided. We're so divided because of you. You've only caused more vast division. <laughs> like, hello, you idiot. You are not uniting anybody. M- majority of the country has completely different thoughts and goals and everything than what you and your cronies are saying. All right, this poll is a tad dated being a... Uh published back in January 9, 2020. But, as you see, the U.S. remains center-right ideologically in 2019, which I'm sure it's roughly still that anyways. Slight plurality of Americans in 2019 identified as conservative, 37%. Moderates nearly as high as 35%. And then liberals were just 24%. So when you put the moderates and conservative together, that's what, 72%? of the population so when i say that their stupid ideologies are in a minority they really are they don't even have a quarter of the population i mean let's just look at this chart moderate is always high what's the liberal see liberal is always pretty low it really hasn't even grown since 92 (laughs) it's basically the same 17 percent up to 24 what is that seven percent gain I mean, I guess every year is like that, but the other ones have always been way higher, so. (laughs) I thought I saw a little bit more stats. Uh, As Americans continue to lean more Democratic than Republican in their party preferences in 2019, the ideological balance of the country remains center-right, with 37% of Americans on average identifying as conservative during the year, 35% as moderate, and 24% as liberal. The percentage identifying as conservative in 2019 was up two points from 35% measured in 2018, while the percentage liberal was down two points from 26%. So there you go, see? That means people that thought they were all about this nonsense are like, oh, this ain't for me. (laughs) They've ditched it. Man, I wish this was newer. This was hard just finding this, though. So, uh, yeah, like I was saying, though. (laughs) And we got to deal with all your nonsense because the media loves your side. And, yeah. 
any president has gotten that kind of support from their... Oh, let's not forget, too, all the stuff about racism and stuff all the time. Constantly talking about that. That's not going to help anything. You know how to let it die? You let it die by just stop talking about it. Something that I've been thinking for years. Why do they constantly talk about it? Think about kids. Kids aren't inherently racist. They pl- At school, they play with anybody. They play with the... The black kid, they play with the the other white kids, they play with the Chinese kids, they play with the girls, they play with the boys, they play with the tall kids, the short kids, they don't care. But then you grow up and you keep hearing, oh, racist, oh, the country's so racist, oh, racist, oh, racism, oh, this cop killed this guy because he's racist. You know, it's not because the guy was charging at him with a gun or a knife or something, nope, it's because the cop's racist. Oh, the cop should have just let that guy stab him, he's so racist for shooting him to protect himself. And then that's when kids start to change. And then they think, ooh, I'm not supposed to like that person. You know, kind of like what they did with, like, the Muslim people. How everyone's like, ooh, you're a terrorist. Ugh. They created racism. Although that would have been Republican because that was uh, George Bush. But still, it's like, maybe if you just stop talking about it, it goes away. You know, like Morgan Freeman says. Black History Month you find ridiculous. Why? You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do you do with yours? What, which month is white history month? No, well, no, 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 come on. Tell me. Well, the, I'm Jewish. Okay. Which I'm month sure. is Jewish history month? No, there isn't one. Oh. Oh. Why not? Yeah. Do you want one? No, no. No. I, I, right. I, I don't either. I don't want a black history month. Black history is American history. How are we going to get rid of racism? Until... Stop talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. From their constituency. But <coughs> we only have 50. And you can't get even two, three, four Republicans to vote. Look what's happening now with regard to everything from the way they talk about this potential decision from the Supreme Court. I mean, it's going to be, it's awful. What do we do about well, that? I well, mean, what do we do? And what well, do you say to Joe Manchin, Kristen Sinema, what do you say to them when well, you get them on the telephone? Well, what I say to them is, and by the way, they agree on a lot of these proposals relating to everything from, from choice all the way to... I would hope so. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I know, but it's not like they are there 80% of the time. The pace that they're not there is Joe's not there on a lot of things having to do with the climate and the environment because he comes from cold country and, and he has a different view. Um, and This is just a weird place to stop, but, like, why is he sitting so stupidly in that chair? The chair is facing so that you could be towards the audience, and I get it, you're trying to talk to Jimmy, but what? Just move the chair! Make it more normal! <laughs> what are you doing? You look like an idiot! You're a 70-year-old guy, not a... 10 year old kid and uh kristen is not always there in terms of the tax policies look here's where we are we have the fastest growing economy in the world oh here we go this nonsense again i shouldn't have paused it actually let me let me rewind it a tiny bit because this part is i watched this one time a while ago and i just remembered this part is so stupid so let me try to what are we Eleven thirty-one. let's go back to 11 tiny bit come on tiny bit let's go no, come on, tiny bit. Why is it not even moving? 11, what was I at? Dang it, I'll go to 28. All right, ready? Let's get it. We have the fastest growing economy in the world. The world. The world. We have... What, what the heck was the point of that? The world. The world. The world. What do you think saying a lie three times in a row is going to do? Is it somehow make it a truth? What does he think? This is Beetlejuice? It's going to make a truth show up out of nowhere? We don't have the fastest growing economy in the world. We have the fastest declining economy in the world. Are you serious right now? Uh, First off, massive inflation is never a good sign. What are you talking about? Fastest growing economy. Second off, the stock market is going down rapidly. Like, worse than rapidly. It's, It's just like free falling at this point. I ought to know. I have a portfolio that I deposit into every single week. And yet, despite me adding money to it every week, every single week, my overall balance is lower than it was the week before. (laughs) Like, obviously, it's doing very badly. We do not have a fastest growing economy in the world, in the world, in the world. 
we have one of the worst in the world in the world in the world. Oh, and let's not forget, too, you know, our terrible gas prices and all that other nonsense. It is not growing at all. It literally isn't growing anyways. There's nothing new that's been happening. What have you done to stimulate this economy? Not a single thing. <laughs> How do you think it's growing when you're doing nothing? The only thing that we had <coughs> was the Keystone Pipeline, which you shut down right away because you're an idiot. <laughs> but at least that would have created a lot of jobs there alone. But nope, you got rid of that. So, like, what what do you even think you're doing that you're stimulating uh, uh, the economy? Oh, oh, because I'm trying to push towards electric cars. Okay, well, again, Tesla, you know, owned by Elon Musk, he had to lay off 10% of his Tesla staff because of the economy. So, you can't use that excuse. So, so how is this How is this the greatest in the world, in the world, in the world? Just like you get your stupid press secretary person... John, John, whatever her dumb name is, John idiot diversity hire, and she's always talking about how we are, the economy is in a great spot to be able to handle this, talking about, like, inflation and stuff, it's like, no, you idiot, no economy is in a great spot if it's experiencing that type of stuff, and even if it is, that just means it's gonna be turned around to be ruined, so even if it was in a good spot, it shortly won't be, and they're projecting late next year there's going to be a recession, which I don't even know how they say in late next year. I would, <laughs> I'd say late this year. Give it a few more months. At the rate that everything's collapsing. 8.6 million new jobs just since I got in office. Unemployed. That's, I guarantee that's 100% a, a lie. What did you just say? I, just, I created 8.6 million jobs since I got into office. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You know what actually happened? Um, what happened was there was a pandemic <laughs> that occurred that caused a lot of companies to need to downsize, which means a lot of people were temporarily laid off. Now, in that time of, oh, and the government was also giving out tons of money. So people either A, were laid off by the company, or B, they chose to take themselves out of work because they thought, hey, the government will pay me to stay home, and I'm actually going to make more money staying at home, a la the, the government, than if I go to work. So now companies that were running multiple shifts and or were much larger for the one shift that they did have <coughs> are now smaller during that period. Um, me personally, I worked two jobs during the pandemic, during the whole entire pandemic. I mean, I guess technically if you ask some retard like Fauci, they'll say, oh, we're still in the pandemic. But no, we're not. F you. Like, people aren't stupid. We know it's it's nothing. I've had COVID four times. I'm totally fine. Like, it never was a threat, and it still isn't. So anyways, my point is, is I've worked through the whole thing, like, during the height of it. 2020, 2021, I had two jobs. Now, my main job, in the plant, prior to COVID, we probably had, I don't know, we had a lot of people. I don't really know the exact numbers, but... Once COVID hit, we ended up dropping down to about, I don't know, 50 or 60 people in the plant. We also went from three shifts down to essentially one shift, and then we would have like a very, very weak second shift, which I always thought, what's the point of this? You might as well just take these eight people and put them on first shift and, and then just increase the productivity on first shift instead of being open for two shifts when the second shift is like not even worthy of being called the shift. Um... But yeah, and same as at my second job. My second job was out of Dunkin' Donuts. And there were times where it, it was supposed to be a 24-hour store, but we were so short-staffed that we were only were open for first and second shift, and then that was it. So there was a lot of times that the store was closing at 6 p.m. Um, I think one time, even, it was so extreme that we closed after breakfast only. Well, not breakfast, but just first shift. So noon. We closed at noon because there was nobody available for second or any any of the other shifts. Um, and mind you as well, on the first shift, we were very short staffed. You know, we were short probably by three people at least. So that means everybody that was there was doing, you know, a little bit more, maybe 33% more, 50% more, depending on how many people are working. I mean, I remember this one Sunday, I think there was only four people total. 
<laughs> including myself and the manager. Four people. So me, the manager, and two other people. On a Sunday morning breakfast rush by ourselves. So, yeah. The point is, is this idiot's talking about all these jobs being created? No. All it was was jobs that were already there that people vacated because either the company made them or they chose to. And now they're just going back. So either these people are going back to their jobs or it's new people coming in and just filling those positions that were already there. Like, again, my company, my main company, we are now up to fully staffed first and second shift. And third shift is getting robust. We have some departments that are very fully staffed. The, and then we have others I think we're still working on. But whatever we used to have for staff, 50 or 60 people, we're now up to, I think, like 110. So we've basically doubled the staff, but, you know, we didn't, like, double our facility or we're not producing way more output. Everything's the same. It's just those people are coming back to work now. As far as Duncan's, I, I left there in September of last year, so I can't speak to how that's coming along. But regardless, I would think that people are probably going back to work if they're coming back to my company. So, yeah. And, obviously, that would be a lot of companies. It's not just my company doing that. It's all companies that had to lay people off for COVID or whatever are now taking their people back. Like, no jobs were created. They were there, they've been there, and they were filled. <laughs> but... <laughs> They became vacated because of some stupid virus, and now they're just being refilled. That doesn't mean you created a job. You did nothing. Employment rates down to 3.6%. We reduced the deficit last year by 320 And then that's what he talks about too all the time. Uh, the unemployment's down to 3.6%. I don't know about that. Something seems wrong. There's no way the unemployment's down to 3.6%, because even under normal economies, it's always at like 8%. So... Something is a bit screwy here. Statistics is a math that you can easily manipulate to um, make the data be whatever you need it to be. So I don't know. They could be saying unemployment uh, in comparison to what it was during COVID. And maybe now the comparison is like 3.6% or whatever. But in general, that's that doesn't seem right. Because this dick bag has not created a single job. So there's no reason that we'd be at 3.6%. You know, like... <laughs> something's not right but i don't know what to look into i don't know how to do the research but i know that that's grossly over exaggerated i just i don't know how to prove it unfortunately Twenty billion dollars this year gonna reduce it by 1.7 trillion dollars trillion oh here we go here's this nonsense too i gotta look this up really quick um actually i'm gonna do that right now because he's always talking about the deficit and the debt oh we reduced the deficit by this much but at the same time, we increased the national debt by trillions. So I don't know what deficit really means and how to, I don't know. Whatever it is, I, again, I feel like deficit is probably like a statistical kind of word. Like I just said, how you can manipulate stats to be whatever you need it to be. I feel like that's what deficit is because at the end of the day, our, our national debt is like $30 trillion. That's what matters. I don't care what the deficit is. The national debt is, if you have... You know, a credit, you know, if you, if you as an individual say have a hundred thousand dollars in debt, that's terrible. You have a lot of money that you have to pay back. Like if you're a regular citizen is what I mean. Like if I had a hundred thousand dollars in debt, that's psychotic. That's a lot of money I owe versus my deficit. I don't know what that means. So let's look into that so we can uh, better make fun of this moron. All right. I got quite a few tabs open up here to try to help us understand. So deficit spending says government spending which is an excess of revenue of funds raised by borrowing rather from taxation. So it's basically money that goes to the debt then. So what? What? I guess with the... Oh, what? This is confusing. So that means deficit and debt are the same thing. I'm trying to think like this would be like a credit card that you take a cash advance out on then, right? Well, no, because it says from borrowing rather than... So that's like you go to your buddy and you're like, Hey, man, you got 20 bucks I can borrow? So yeah, that's your deficit. But at the same time, it's still your debt. You owe that guy 20 bucks now. It just adds to your debt. It's just a little bit different. It's not like a company is going to be sending you invoices and stuff. It's just your buddy be like, Hey, you got my 20 bucks? 
Let's see, let's read this one. Deficit spending. Within the budgetary process, deficit spending is the amount by which spending exceeds revenue over a particular period of time, also called simply deficit or budget deficit. The opposite of a budget surplus. So the amount of spending exceeds revenue. So at the same time, that's like, I guess, if you used your credit card. You use your credit card when you don't have the money. But it still allows you purchasing power, just not really, you know, because you still got to pay that back. So at the same time, that's still debt. Is deficit just a way to try to be sneaky? Or am I not understanding this? It's still the same thing as debt, basically. The opposite of budget surplus. The term may be applied to the budget of a government, private company, or individual. Yeah, it all just goes to debt. What is an example of deficit spending? A budget deficit occurs when a government spends more in a given year than it collects in revenues such as taxes. <clears throat> as a simple example, <coughs> if a government takes in $10 billion in revenue in a particular year and its expenditures for the same year are $12 billion, it's running a deficit of $2 billion. Yeah, but that's also debt. That goes back to my credit card example. You know, say you make $50,000 a year and you spend all your 50000 on rent and everything else, but you have a credit card that you put 2000 on, then that's like saying you have a deficit of 2000 but that's also your 2000 in debt. You're in debt to your cardholder company, whoever that is, Chase, or, 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 or what else is there? I don't know, Indigo, or <laughs> Visa. Visa's kind of generic, that's just the brand, but you know what I mean. So it's the same thing. I guess this is just a way to break it down by year, though, because, like, debt just accumulates over the years, where deficit, I guess, you would track per year. Is that what this is saying? Because at the end of the day, that that would go to your debt. Now you have $2 billion more in national debt with this example. What happens deficit spending? What does that mean? Deficit, deficit spending occurs when the government spends more than it collects in revenues given a budget year. That's the same exact thing I just read. Oh, wait. It typically makes up this difference by borrowing money, which generates debt, duh, and increases the amount of uh, the amount the government must pay in interest. Why is deficit spending good? No, it's not. An increase in the fiscal deficit, in theory, can boost a sluggish economy by giving more money to people who can then buy and invest more. Long-term deficits, however, can be detrimental for economic growth and stability. The U.S. has run deficits consistently over the past decade. What? An increase in the fiscal deficit, in theory, can boost a sluggish economy? So what? Is that kind of like what, with their stupid stimulus idea? So you'd borrow money from, I don't know, Canada, and then give it to us, and be like, hopefully they spend it, and then we can boost some... I don't know. Um, does deficit spending lead to inflation? Under a transaction theory cost of separate demands for money and bonds... Higher deficits do not lead to higher inflation through monetary accommodation or crowding out. According to this theory, private monetization causes bonds to be almost perfect substitutes for money. So deficits are directly inflationary. What? It just said higher deficits don't lead to higher inflation through monetary accommodation or crowding out. But then it says deficits are directly inflationary. <laughs> okay, that didn't help at all. <clears throat> deficit spending within the budgetary process deficit spending is amount by which spending exceeds revenue whatever let's check out this one now i did one national debt what the heck national debt versus um uh, uh deficits deficits because i wasn't fully understanding that first thing so we have the national debt is what you get from adding up all the federal deficits accumulated from year to year Whenever there is a deficit, the government adds to the national debt by borrowing money from citizens, investors, pension, and mutual funds, foreign governments, such as China, to pay its bills. So that's that's kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Risky, scary, dangerous. It says borrows from pensions. Like, that's people's money that they worked towards for when they retire. Same as investments. I mean, that's like the stock market, but still. Yeah, so this is basically what I said. A deficit is per year, the debt that you added per year, where debt is just accumulated. So, like, my student loans that I'm still paying back is part of my debt, but that was my deficit back in 2009 when I signed up for them. But now it's just my debt. 
Okay, so now let's do this. I saw this. I found this awesome chart thing. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, there's a lot more to it, but we just care about this portion. U.S. debt increased by present per fiscal year. The U.S. Treasury Department has historical tables that report the annual U.S. debt for each fiscal year since 1790. We've compiled this data from that source to create the figures below. Joe Biden, this mother. On October 1st, 2021, at the end of the fiscal year 2021, the national debt was a ridiculous $28.4 trillion. Between the end of fiscal year 2020 and the end of fiscal year 2021, the national debt grew by $1.5 trillion, a 5.6% increase year over year, which is psychotic because that is a ridiculous amount of money. So 5.6% sounds low. See, you could use, like I was saying with statistics, how you can make them be whatever you need them to be, you could use that number and say, oh, it only went up 5.6%. And that sounds low. Like, oh, that's not bad. But when you put it in the grand scheme of things, that's a lot. 1.5 trillion? It just sounds like 5.6, no big deal, because, um, you know, you're talking about 28.4 trillion. Is that right? 5.6? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Man. Anyways, for fiscal year 2022, retard's budget includes a deficit of $1.84 trillion, which we just learned deficit is terrible because that is uh, spending more than we pulled in this year, which means it's just going to add to next year. So now we have $1.84 trillion more. That's, uh, that's higher by, well, basically $340 billion over last year. And by the end of January 2022, the national debt had already grown to exceed 30 trillion it's ridiculous so so far this dick bag has added three point uh three four trillion dollars of debt <laughs> in a year and a half three point three four trillion Jeez. we could go over all of these but we're just talking about biden right now um there was something else I wanted to show down here as well. As soon as I could find it. One of these guys actually had a good year also. Where is he? Wilson. In 1914, a slight surplus. Not bad. All presidents from 1790 to that <laughs> added a total of $2.8 billion to the national debt. Jeez, that's nothing. I mean, then again, money was way different, so... Frequently asked questions. Which president has put the United States the most in debt? Ready? I bet you couldn't guess. Joe Biden is on track to add the most to the budget deficit. Largely due to the costs associated with continuing to battle the coronavirus pandemic. That's just trying to be nice. Let's be real. I mean, yeah, there was all that stupid nonsense with the COVID relief checks. But, um, you know, the $40 billion that we gave to Ukraine on a whim for absolutely no reason, that had nothing to do with COVID. Or, you know, the, the other infrastructure thing. I don't think it passed, but, you know, when they were trying to pass that for another $1.5 trillion, I think it was. Um, yeah, that had nothing to do with COVID either. That was just them being a bunch of stupid, <laughs> um, terrible decision makers and thinking, yeah, we can just casually get this much money for no reason. But regardless, in late 2021, Congress voted to raise the deal, uh, debt ceiling. Yeah, unfortunately they did. And then as soon as they raised the debt ceiling, they passed some nonsense that just blew the debt out of proportion more. Like, okay, good. We got this. Let's just add to the debt. Why does the United States owe so much debt? Continued decreases in the amount of taxes paid by corporations and the wealthiest Americans have resulted in less money coming in. At the same time, spending on pandemic relief in the military continues to increase. That's kind of the propaganda they always say. But yeah, dick back. So, you know, he's over here talking about we reduced the deficit or something. Yeah, no, you didn't. Also, really quick. Um, this website is thebalance.com. I just, I gotta give credit. And obviously the author is down here, uh, Hillary Gould. All right, so now after learning that, we're gonna go back for a second and just see what this moron was saying. And let's get it. Well, not a lot of the things having to do with the climate and the environment, because he comes from cold country and, and he has a different view. Um, and uh, Kristen is not always there in terms of the tax policies. Look, here's where we are. 
We have the fastest growing economy no, we don't. in the world. Here we go. The world. Yeah, cool. The world. No. We have 8.6 million new jobs just since I got in office. No, you don't. Unemployment rate's down to 3.6%. We've reduced the deficit last year by $320 billion. This year, we're going to reduce it by $1.7 trillion. Trillion. <laughs> All right, what are you talking about? We reduce the deficit. Bro, there's no such thing as reducing a deficit. <laughs> There's no such thing as reducing a deficit. It just means what? That you spent less? <laughs> that would be like, like back to my credit card example that I had before, where you maxed out all your, your income, and then you spent on your card $2,000. And then the next year, you max out your income, and you only spent 1000 on your credit card, and you're like, oh, I reduced my deficit. But since you maxed out all your money, you haven't paid off any of those bills, so now you owe your credit card company $3,000. Reducing the deficit is not a thing. Look at this dick bag too, thinking he's saying something. Shut your stupid mouth. Seriously, right now? Oh, so that's another thing that we gotta look up. Whatever he was just talking about. Um, dang it, I hate to keep reminding, but he said one other thing I thought of. We need to get more information on. Eleven forty-eight. So let me just find this. Da 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 da. da. We'll start at forty. Six percent. We reduced the deficit last year by three hundred twenty billion. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was talking about fastest growing economies. So let's see, you know, in the world, in the world, in the world, who in the world, in the world, in the world really is a fastest growing economy. All right, so a tiny bit of research, and it's very easy to debunk this moron with his baseless claims that he just throws out there, throws up. Hey, what does that say? What does that say? So let's get it. The world's fastest growing economies from Focus Economics. Let's see. This is based on from 2021 to 2025. We have India in first, Bangladesh in second, Rwanda in third, Vietnam in fourth, and Cambodia in fifth. I'm not seeing any of that being United States. Okay? And India apparently is on fire with like how <laughs> they are blowing up. Um, so first off, right there, you're wrong. Second off, I was looking at this. So maybe. You know, who has the best economy in terms of GDP? Okay, United States. We, we're right on the top. But that has nothing to do with the economy, like you're saying. That it just has to do with our GDP. That's different. I mean, fastest growing economies. China, India, and the United States. Even if you look at this chart, we're still in third. Even though we're the fastest in the world, in the world, in the world. Which country has the best future? Again, we're still in third. South Korea is in first, Singapore is in second, then us. Um, who will be the next superpower? China. <laughs> Doesn't say us. Um, who will be the richest? Luxembourg. Doesn't say us. Um. You know, I thought there was, uh, but there was something about India. Where did that go? Well, let's, uh, where did that go? Hmm, not liking that. Whoops. Let's just, uh, back out of this really quick. Uh, um, where's the article about India? Here we go. Which country has the fastest growing economy in 2022? India. As the Ukraine conflict impacts the global GDP, India is projected to grow by 6.4% in 2022, slower than the last year's 8.8%, but still the fastest growing major economy. With higher inflationary pressures and uneven recovery of the labor market, curbing private consumption and investment, according to a... And then there's more. Yeah. Apparently, India is just dominating right now. How is the economy doing right now as of 2022? The conference board forecasts that the U.S. real GDP growth will rise 2.1%. India was what? 6, 7, 6.4. Yeah, 2.1. That's definitely in the world, in the world, in the world, right? Dick bag. Um, quarter over quarter annualized rate. Quarter 2, 2022 versus, what was that? Minus 1.5% growth in Q1. Wow. So first, that 2.1% increase has to make up for that minus 1.5. So you're really just looking at a 0.6 increase. Wow. Annual growth in 2022 should come in at 2.3% year over year, and we expect growth of 1.8% year over year in 2023. 
Yeah, as opposed to India's 8.8 and their 6.4. Now, granted, India is kind of like a third world country. So, I mean, what is that really saying? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the thing back when I was talking about the deficit. It's only 5%, but that's still 1.5 trillion. So, I mean, with the their GDP could be... I don't know. What, what is their GDP? Let me just do this really quick with you live instead of having it pre-set up. India's... Oh, of course it puts this gaps. You know, iPhones are so awesome. They work so great. Just kidding. Can't ever type anything that you say. India's GDP. Let's see what this is. Just to see. Just to give them a fair... 2.623 trillion? Jeez. That's even more than Canada? <laughs> and Australia? What? Wow. What did this say? 3 trillion? Man, India is doing more than I thought they did. Hold on, then. What's ours? Really quick. USA GDP. Yeah, that was like 20 million or something, right? Yeah, 20, I mean, million, trillion, I meant. So, yeah, I mean, in relation, three is low for India and cons compared to our being at 20. But still, that's not the point. The point is, you know, you're talking about fastest growing economy in the world, in the world, in the world. No, we're not. India's coming up. Uh, China's been coming up. You know, other random countries like Bangladesh and stuff are coming up. So, you know, choose your words better, like Joker would say. Very poor choice of words. All right, now that we got that misinformation out of the way, <laughs> let's carry on. In dollars this year, going to reduce it by $1.7 trillion. Trillion dollars. Right. And so we're the strongest economy, and that's allowed us at least to stay on top of and a little bit ahead of what's happening around the world. Second thing is, look, inflation is the, is, is, the, is the bane of our existence. Inflation is mostly in food and in gasoline. No, inflation is in everything because it starts in gasoline. And then what happens? You know, you got to transfer your goods in a truck from A to B. Well, when it costs more for that truck, the trucking company charges, you know, their bills go up to the vendors. And then the vendors, what do they do? They increase their um, prices to make up the difference for the fuel costs that the trucking companies are trying to make up for. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's not just food and fuel. It ends up being everything. And also, dickhead, inflation is a, uh, let's say it's a, um, a, a constant in a mathematical formula. So as inflation goes up, so does absolutely everything else, just because. I mean, I am on some of the financial side on my company, and we have changed our rate to be 1.7, you know, our our. our our multiplier rate is 1.7 to match the inflation. So when Before it was where it's at now, we were at 1.5, but now we have to bring it up to 1.7 because inflation, and it's probably going to have to go to 1.8 because inflation rate is now 8.6%. So I'm probably going to have to raise it even more. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. Also, um... It's also it's everything else too. Houses. Why are houses more expensive, huh? That's not food. That's not that's not um fuel. I mean, there's houses in areas that are just kind of blah, you know, not much yard, not much privacy, you know, neighbors all around and stuff. And they're going for like three hundred thousand dollars. Under a normal economy, that's like a hundred thousand dollar house tops. Now they're three hundred thousand. Like, oh yeah, that's only food and, and fuel though, right? Idiot. At the pump. That's what kills you, because it's well, a little billboard you, telling everyone you know, every, how expensive but, everything but, is. If Donald Trump leaves one of those Sharpies over for you, you could maybe change the price on that, uh, you know. Bob, we, we could. What? For, what are you talking about? A billboard talking about how everything's more expensive. Everything is. <laughs> I mean... Even look at the dollar store. Dollar store is not dollar store anymore. They're dollar twenty five store. Um, what else? What what did I just look at recently? Oh man, I wish I could remember this example. I was just at the store looking at something, and the stuff was so much more expensive than it's been in 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 recent ish times. And it was like this is just ridiculous. There's no reason for this other than that the economy sucks. 
And what's he making some dumb Donald if Donald Trump left the Sharpie? What, what? What are you even talking about? Them two are perfect for each other right now. They're sharing, they're sharing half a brain cell between the two of them. What did that even mean? And somehow this brain-dead loser in blue over here caught on and he knows what he meant. What, what are you even saying? If Donald Trump lays a, leaves a Sharpie around, you can write on a billboard? What? Yeah. But, here, but, 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 but here's the deal. You know, my dad used to say... Every, every Here we go. Is a little bit of breathing room. If you it's funny, you've been saying that since day one, and yet you've been v wildly, like wildfire, just destroying the economy. So, so much for that breathing room. Take and look at all the costs that a family has on a monthly basis. It also includes health care, prescription drugs, child care, all those things. What I'm proposing we get, and I think we can get it done, I'm proposing that we, in fact, reduce the cost of those things. Why should anybody, anybody of you in the audience know anybody who has to take insulin every month because they have sure. type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes? Well, guess what? They're charging as high as a thousand bucks a month in some places, average $647 a month on average. Well, if I pass what I want to get done, which we can do, and we can do it relatively easy, it's not going to cost more than $35 a month. It costs these companies. No, no, I, I'm not. This is not, as our friends on Fox would say, socialism. This is very practical. They have, it costs 10 bucks to make a vial. So charging $35 gives them, you know, a significant profit. They don't need, for example, our oil companies. Oil companies, instead of everybody says, well, Biden won't let them drill. They have, they have 9,000 drilling sites that they've already owned that are there. They're not doing... <laughs> Here's a bunch of stuff. Um, so you're talking about Biden won't let them drill. Well, you kind of won't because you're being a dickhead with your stupid push for electric vehicles. Don't try to shift your narrative out of nowhere. We know what your dumb narrative is. Second off, um, there is tons of oil here domestically that we could be tapping into. But do we? Nope. You even had the Keystone Pipeline, which would have been massive like in terms of, you know, oil savings and stuff. Nope, let's shut that down. And then, of course, this moron constantly wants to blame everything on Putin. Oh, Putin's tax. What does that have to do with anything? What do we even get from Russia? Probably nothing. So what are you talking about Putin's tax? Oh, Putin's tax. No, it's called you suck. <laughs> like, own up to it. Don't blame it on something that has nothing to do with anything. How about this? Inflation is whose fault? Uh, Putin price hike all the way. That's who it's got to be. Vladimir Putin's fault. Today's inflation report confirmed what Americans already know. Putin's price hike is hitting America hard. Inflation right. is the Putin <laughs> price hike. This hmm. is a staggering chart. That should zoom in on this. But chart. that's, that's, but wait, wait. this is Vladimir. That's, what? I don't understand. I, I don't either, because it was looking pretty steady. I, I like that. You know, the little curves there, a little ridge line. Uh, this is Joe Biden takes office. This is the American Rescue Plan passed. I don't know what that angle is. You have to tell me, Will. Is that a steep ski slope? Eighty percent? No, I, I don't even. I can't even tell. Uh, passed. This is Putin invading Ukraine when it comes to inflation. Yet they want to blame all of this on that. I mean, you're the one that sent Ukraine forty billion dollars. So how about you own up to that? That that has nothing to do with Russia. You know what I mean? Like that waste of money right there that's just hurting everybody in these states has nothing to do with russia putin didn't tell you to do that you chose to idiot but anyways another thing i want to talk about too is they're always talking about you know they, they always try to pull the wool over your eyes and make it so like you know try to p build things up to sound better for themselves but at my company um i i don't want to say i work with the guy he's actually a vendor for us but you know I, I do work very closely with him we do need his services quite a bit and um yeah he's he's italian he's from italy he's moved here i mean he's been here for a long time now at least what pushing 30 years if not but he still has family in italy that he does visit once a year at least, um, he just got back from like a three week vacation in Italy visiting them. And, you know, he was talking about politics and stuff. Not, he doesn't want to, it's just kind of, you know, he was at the shop and I actually saw him. I don't usually see him. I talk to him a lot on the phone or an email, but he was actually at my shop. So I saw him and we were just chatting and, um, 
well, that's how it got started because I made a joke because he drives like a big SUV. He, I mean, it seems impractical, but considering what he does, he, he does need the space. It's either he's going to have to have a big SUV or some kind of truck or van or something. So in either, any case, he's stuck with needing a larger vehicle, but, um, I, he, he's kind of far. He lives in, I mean, his company's in the middle of the state and he comes out to where I'm at, which is at the edge of the state. You know, he's got a solid, probably hour and 20 minute ride every time he comes out. And so I made a joke and I was like, geez, with these gas prices, this vehicle is very impractical. And uh, that's how he kind of went on his tangent. But he was saying, you know, here they'll, they'll try to make it sound good because over in like Europe, gas is like $2 a liter, which, you know, roughly four liters is a gallon. So that means their gas is equivalent to like $8 a gallon. So then when you come over here and you're like, oh, it's only five bucks a gallon. That's not bad compared to the rest of the world. But he says, but there's a lot that you're not taking into consideration when they spit that crap at you. Um, one is, he says, the cars made that they have over in Europe are way more efficient and well-made than what we have here. He says when he was in Europe, or Italy, I mean, he rented a car. And for the whole entire time that he was there, he said, I only put $5 worth of gas in, well, 5 euros, which he said the euros exchange rate is basically one-to-one -one with the United States. So 5 euros is basically 5 bucks. And so at their rate, he got 2 liters of gas practically, 2.5 liters of gas. So it's about half a gallon. And he says it lasted him the whole entire three weeks that he was out there. And, uh, yeah, he says, but that's due to a lot of things that we don't have here in the United States. He says, one, the cars there are m way better made than they are here in the States. I mean, I don't know what kind of crap they're sending us because we get cars from all over the world, you know, imports as well as domestic. But somehow European cars, like, they just put better pride in the ones that they're keeping, I guess. The ones I ship out, they're like, eh, fuck it, we'll give you some crap and you can uh, pay for repairs. <laughs> He says, two, all the cars out there are diesel. So I don't <coughs> I don't fully know diesel what that means. All I know is that diesel <coughs> Um God dang it. All the time this stupid dry throat or heartburn. Ugh. Anyways. All I know is that with a truck, diesel burns more consistently and better, like a, when you're towing. So I guess somehow it's better. So, anyways, the cars are diesel, they're better made, and he says towns and stuff are different there you have everything that you need right in one town like just all right there he's like you know versus like here in the states you want to go to the store you got to travel a little bit to get to the store or like me you know he was talking about himself like me look how far i gotta travel for my business i come all the way out here and I'm like we're not the furthest i think he goes so we're in connecticut i think he goes down to what did he say uh, North Carolina is one of his biggest customers, so I don't know if he's traveling to North Carolina all the time. I don't think he is, but let's say he does. Like, that's far. He says, but in Europe, or especially Italy, it's different. Every, everything you need is all right there in your community. So, for the most part, you don't even need to drive. You could just walk everywhere. And another example, like he said, even if you do have to drive, it's, it's taking nothing. He put half a gallon in his tank, and it lasted him three weeks on a rental <laughs> like that's ridiculous the other thing is he says you know it's like um everything else that we have here that we have to pay for this is what made me think of this because he was just saying you know your monthly costs are also your health insurance and what have you well that's another thing health insurance here sucks we pay a lot for our health insurance and um you know everyone knows in europe it's free everyone just has insurance you don't have to pay for it yeah, uh, you know, the guy I work with was saying that, of course, the medical care is, you know, it's the best here in the States, but still, if you have something relatively basic, it's free. You just go to the doctors, and you get the medicine you need, and you pay for nothing. Where here, you're paying tons for insurance throughout the year, and then if you have a deductible you need to meet, you gotta pay tons more before your insurance even kicks in. And, um, what else did he mention? I don't know, it's just there's a difference in in the cultures that we don't hear about. So yeah, okay, maybe gas in Italy is equal to 8 bucks a gallon, but at the end of the day, it's not affecting them as much as it's affecting us, and to a certain extent, they have a lot more disposable income because they don't have insurance to pay for. If they go to the doctors, they don't end up with hospital bills, 
Um, it's just, it's different. So when you try to gaslight everybody and make it sound like, you know, X, it's really Y. But they're just intentionally keeping that part hidden from us. Just to push their narrative further. You know why? Because they make more money not drilling and buying back their own stock. It's all screwed up. No, and that's the it, thing. It's well, that, it is screwed up, but we are only a few votes away from being able to straighten it out. How about this? Oil companies are reducing production and racking up record prices, and that's why you're paying over $5 at the pump. Oil companies, instead of everybody says, well, Biden won't let them drill, they make more money not drilling and buying back their own stock. Why has production gone down? Well, it could be that when the Biden administration took office, they suggested they want to put oil and gas companies out of business. Look at this headline. API un unveils a 10-point policy plan to restore U.S. energy leadership, fuels economic recovery. They said specifically, Pete, we want to put them out of business. We're going to put you out of business. And then what happens? And what happens is they're not increasing refining capacity for obvious reasons. It doesn't make sense. Or they've moved over to uh, refining renewables because that's all this administration has signaled they care about is renewable energy. So when you try to destroy an industry... They stop investing. And then blame an industry, they stop investing simply as a business decision. We have to get the message across in a way that is understandable to people like the folks in my family we grew up. Tell people what the, what, 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 just what the facts are. And the facts are that... Okay, a couple things right there before we get any further. First off, he says that we need to convey stuff that's understandable. Um, yeah, you need to learn how to communicate. Because, uh, one, you suck at it because you can't even take any questions because you know you're going to flub it all. Second off, he says the facts. Yeah, how about you try that? Because everything that comes out of your mouth and your administration's mouth is an absolute 100% lie. I mean, there's crap that... I wish I could remember it so I could put it in right here, but there's something that he claimed, and there's a f actual fact-checking website that gave it a... Oh, what do they give it? They give it something goofy, like four um, dunce caps or four... They have some kind of icon, but anyways, the more you have, the worse of a lie it is, and I think four is max. So basically, this site found that something he said was 100% a lie, but nope, keep pitching your propaganda, keep lying, but you know, you say facts. Well, where are the facts? When are you going to start actually saying the facts instead of the lies that you want to pitch? Your propaganda. It's like that stupid disinformation board. Luckily, that got shut down almost immediately, but that would have just been a whole bunch of propaganda. It would have been these idiots, these leftist idiots, that uh, as, soon as, an, as soon as an actual truth comes out that doesn't fit their narrative, they would have said, oh, that's disinformation. Even though, no, it's not. It's the truth, but you don't want to hear it. You know, kind of like people that have been talking about COVID since day one, like me. I mean, since April 2020, I've been saying that this is not that big a deal. It's nothing to be scared of. It's being over-exaggerated. Yeah, at first we didn't know. Like when March, when this all first started in the States, it was like, uh-oh. But then once you had time to really, like, realize and you, you knew people that got it and they were fine, it was like, oh, this is nothing. But nope, anybody that said that, they were, their videos would be um, either taken. I had a video that I made, just the title said, why I don't want to get the vaccine. That's all. I was just saying my opinions why I don't, I personally don't want to get the vaccine. I put this up on YouTube and I'm pretty sure they took it down. Yeah, they did take it down. So then I had to remake it. I mean, the, the video itself is basically the same. I just changed the title, re-uploaded it with a different title, and that allowed it to stay. But because my title didn't fit their narrative, oh, everybody needs to get the vaccine, they took my video down. And it's like, that's what they do to everybody. You either get demonetized, if you can monetize your videos, or you get copyright strike. Well, not copyright strikes, but you, know, you get your video taken down, or you get a strike against your channel or something. All because it doesn't fit their narrative. Oh, oh, you're saying something that differs from the propaganda we want to pitch. So yeah, idiot, you're talking about the truth? Where is it? When's your press secretary going to stop lying every single day? When are you going to stop lying every single day? I mean, even in this interview, you've been lying. That's why I made this video as a response to call you out on all your nonsense. Like, <laughs> but then again, his thing was what we, we accept truth over facts or facts over truth or something. We choose truth over facts. Which makes no sense because both words mean the same thing. <laughs> this, uh, this isn't anything about, so this is about building the economy. When I ran, I said, I want to build a new economy. No more trickle down from the bottom up and the middle out because when the middle does well, everybody does well. The wealthy do very, very well. 
The idea there are 54. That's weird. Why do you say the wealthy do very, very well? You're trying to make a pitch like you're talking for the average citizen. Oh, we're going to do the middle up, and then everybody does well. The wealthy. Why did you specifically call out them? The whole point, original, um, I mean, the whole thing that you're saying that you're trying to move away from is the wealthy doing well, and then it trickles down. But now you just said the wealthy keep doing well. <laughs> you kind of defeated your whole point there. And also, how come nobody calls this idiot out like I've been? Why can't stupid Kimmel say all this stuff I've been saying, call him out on his lies, and give, make him give real answers and stuff? Why doesn't anybody do this? No, it's just some doofus like me. I'll get 10 views on this video. Nobody's going to even watch the whole thing. It'll be about five minutes that they watch, and then they give up on me. Ugh. Four major corporations in America made $40 billion last year and don't pay a penny in taxes. Hey, $40 billion. Sound familiar? You know, that's what you casually gave away to Ukraine <laughs> when you could have used that in, like, 40 billion different ways here in the States. You know, work on infrastructure for, I don't know, big cities. or You could have, you could have even done something stupid like give the money to big cities and let them do whatever they want. And they could have built, like, a sports stadium, which would have been a, such a waste of money. But you know what? In the short term... Actually, in the long term as well, at least it would have generated a lot of jobs. It would have generated all those jobs to plan and build the stadium. You know, the engineers, the construction people, the co the um, all the materials needed. You know, the cement, the wood, the metal, the pl whatever. You know, the zoning and planning companies would have got a cut. Then once the stadium's open, there'd be all the staff that you need. And then, obviously, there'd be vendors in there. So then there's all the hot dog companies and chips and soda and all that that could benefit from selling their products there as well. So in the long run, even though that would have been a huge waste of the, some of the money, it still would have generated jobs and stuff. It would have done something better than just wasting it in Ukraine. We see no return on that. Ukraine doesn't matter to us. So normal Americans don't care about what's happening in Ukraine. How many of you think the tax code is fair anywhere along the line here? How many? No, I'm not being facetious now. Why does he always say that? What does it have to do with anything? Always with this dumb, I'm not joking. I'm not being facetious. I'm being serious. Dickhead, nobody thinks you're joking or anything. Who, who started laughing or cringing or something? Nobody. Why do you always say that? This guy is so stupid. And he says, how many of you think the tax code is fair? Um, at the end of the day, from what I understand, I'll have to try to find the clip. But from what I understand, the tax code is actually very comprehensive in this country. Um, it's just people like him trying to propagate lies and make it out to be like it's something that it's not. So, here you go. Now try to confuse your audience. I'm being deadly earnest. They don't pay a penny. I don't... So if we had a minimum tax of 15%, just on this year, I mean, minimum 15, it doesn't hurt them at all. They make a lot of money still, and we can raise a lot of money to make sure that child care doesn't cost you 1400 bucks a month. Well, what is a fair share? By nearly every measure, the U.S. has the most progressive system of taxation in the world. I mean, the top 40% of earners pay 95% of all federal income tax. So they actually pay more than their share of income. So what part exactly do you think is unfair? The most fair. <sighs> all right. I'm going to stop it here because we started at about 7 minutes and now it's 15 minutes. So that means it's been double the time. So part 2 is good enough. Plus the people are clapping. So that's a good spot to stop. Um, yeah. So fuck these two idiots. <laughs> and I guess that's all I got for now. So until next time, I will see you then.